undefeated mark on the line tonight at home as they host Stanville. It's the Blue Devils and the Freddies coming up next. Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. I'm Kate Carpenter, and you're watching Fredericktown Basketball on the OH Report.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fredericktown High School. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins and Danville at 6 and 9 overall, 2 and 6 in conference play. They are in town to take on the Freddies, 9 and 6 overall, but they are a perfect 8 and 0 oh in the K Mac and coach. They are the team to beat down the stretch here in this season. And when you're in Fredericktown, that's all you're concerned about right now is K Mac action. Yeah, there's, they play a good non-league schedule. That's going to help them prepare for the tournament. But first and foremost, take care of business inside the conference. Now, don't let the record deceive you. Danville is 6-8 and eight overall, but this is a team that had a nice playoff run as far as football was concerned. And their first-year head coach, Steve Lyons, told me before tonight's game that really pushed their preparation back about four weeks. They got off to a slow start, but six, since then, they've won six of ten games. Well, and I saw them play on uh, OH Report on Tuesday night. They shot 44% from the three-point line. When you shoot 44%, you're going to have a great night. And they did have a great night against the Cardington team that they just put away in the fourth period. They are a team that is really kind of looking to get back on the winning track. They were 18-8 and eight back in 2017-2018, but since then, they've had four straight losing seasons. In fact, they had back-to-back -back seasons where they won only two ball games. So Steve Lyons really has his work cut out for him as he tries to rebuild this program. Well, certainly from outside looking in, I think of Danville first and foremost as a, an outstanding football school. I know they have girls basketball has been ultra successful over the years, but for the men's part, I, I just think of them as a football school. Well, when you come into a place that's, that's football first and foremost, you got to get those kids to at least enjoy basketball, spend some time. It's one thing to have good athletes that play football to come out and play basketball, but you have to have a certain skill level also, and that's going to take time. Well, and he does have one of those athletes to really build his program around. That's Spencer Lane. He leads Danville in scoring, averaging almost 13 a game while he dished out four assists. He also leads the K-Mac in steals, averaging almost three. So he is a guy that in the backcourt, Steve Lyons can put the ball in his hands, let him make plays offensively and distribute to his teammates. Well, it's always nice to start with a ball handler. Every good basketball team has a good point guard, a good ball handler, whether it's a guy that distributes or whether it's a guy that can score. Either way, it's got to be somebody that can handle the ball and handle the show, handle the tempo of how the coach wants the game played. Now on the other side of that, obviously the Fredericktown Freddies, and they only have nine wins overall, but eight of those are in the K-Mac, and as you mentioned, they play a tough non-league schedule. They went to Colonel Crawford and suffered a right. tough loss there. Got off to a slow start, and Coach Dibbling told me that if they'd have had a few more minutes, they might have been able to pull that one out. Well, you know, and that's why you play a good non-league schedule, to prepare you for the rigors of your conference play, prepare you for tournament play, but again, yeah, you played Colonel Crawford, you got beat last Tuesday, but this is the game that you want. You want the conference game. They have a two-game lead right now with four games to go in conference play, so, you know, take care of business in conference play and then be concerned about tournament play when conference play is finished. Now their offense really revolves around a couple of guys. Brady Lester is their leading scorer, and he does a little bit of everything. Averages almost 12 points a game. They don't have what I would call a dominant score, but they right. do have two or three guys that can create, and Brady Lester is one of those guys averaging almost 13 a game. And, Brian, I had a chance to see them play against Centerburg a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, you're going to enjoy watching Kate Carpenter play. He's a gentleman that, you know, he's a big, strong guy. He throws some outstanding passes. I would say he throws a hard of passes I've seen so far this year in high school basketball, but the guy that shined that night was Luke Bean. He was knocking down three after three after three, and this was on the road in a big game with Centerburg. So now if they're gonna remain unbeaten in the K-Mac, what does Fredericktown have to do? Well, first and foremost, utilize your experience. You have seven seniors out there right now. That's a veteran basketball team. 
Not all of them are returning lettermen, but that's an older basketball team that, hey, we're down at the late in the season where there's only a handful of games left for them to play on this basketball court. And second, I put down, finish the quarter, finish the game, finish the conference. Yeah, you're looking for a conference championship, but you can't win that tonight. You're looking to win this game right now, but you can't do that in the first quarter. So concentrate quarter by quarter, maybe even possession by possession, giving your best performance, and then whatever outcome it is, you're going to live with it. And that comes back to the old coaching adage of just play in the moment and take those exactly. one at a time. And that's hard to do with uh, young kids. I mean, they're, I'm sure they know that they have a two-game lead in the conference. They know that they have a chance for a conference championship, but you got to look small picture. Now on the other side of that, Danville, they want to play spoiler, so what do they have to do? to come out on top tonight. Well, obviously you're playing against a very talented team and you're playing them on their home court. So first and foremost, limit Frederick down to one shot each possession. Maybe some possessions you get a turnover, you get some run outs, you get some easy baskets. But don't let Frederick Town play volleyball on the basket on the on the rebounding and get easy baskets by offensive rebounds. And second get the game to the fourth quarter. You look at the free throw shooting. Fredericktown, you don't see this very often. They are in first place in the conference and they only shoot around 54, 55% from the free throw line. Danville shoots much better from the free throw line. If they can get the game close in the fourth quarter, put a little pressure on the Freddies, get to a free throw shooting contest, I think that gives Danville the best choice, now best the- chance. Now the starting lineups for the Danville Blue Devils, they are led by Walker Wilkerson, who had 26 in the first game against Fredericktown. He's a junior. Spencer Payne, Max Payne, they're both seniors. Levi Lyons and Kendall Carter. Carter the junior, he rounds out the starting lineup for the Blue Devils. On the other side for Fredericktown under Derek Dibling, and Dibling has really done a nice job of building this program down here at Fredericktown. We've already talked about Kate Carpenter. He does a little bit of everything, almost 12 points, six boards, and 13 blocks for Cade Carpenter. Tegan Rule, a lot of Freddie fans remember him from football season, a 1,000-yard rusher, one of the K-Max best. He brings that football mentality to the basketball floor. Ben Mast really runs the show from the point guard spot, and Trevor Bellman with 22 steals. And, oh, by the way, Brady Lester, he averages 12 points a game, so he's got a little bit more... A balance offensively does Derek Dibling. Well, and he also brings, as I mentioned, Luke Bean off the bench, and he came off the bench against Centerburg, and I'm thinking it's four or five threes and in a tight ball game until, what, about two, three minutes left in that basketball game. So those were very, very key shots. Now, you can remember this from your time, even that Mansfield senior going back to Lexington, when the target is on your back and you're heading down the stretch of the season and you're trying to win the OCC or you're trying to get yourself ready for the tournament, how do you, we talked about this, how do you keep these guys focused on the moment? Well, again, I think it's a lot of talking with the captains, talking with the team, hoping that the captain talks with the team about the point that you made. Stay in the moment. You know, the conference cannot be won tonight. Their first tournament game cannot be won tonight. But getting better, winning each possession, that can be accomplished tonight. And try to take victories and small victories that will lead to big outcomes. Do you like playing that big non-conference game like they did against Colonel Crawford as you head into the last quarter of the season? Well, you and I have talked about that. I think, you know, unlike football where you need computer points, I think playing a great non-league schedule is important for a basketball team if you want to have success you know maybe in the conference certainly in the tournament run why not challenge your team so when it comes time come tournament time and you're seeing some of these teams in Fredericktown's case Danville's case from Columbus you've played against ultra talented players you're aware of it you know what needs to be done you're not scared of the moment 
Derek Dibling told me that he really found out a lot about his team and what they were made of, and they felt that they can play with that kind of competition. Well, I tell you, you know, we, we know Colonel Crawford. We know the tradition that they have, the success that they have every year. So going up to Colonel Crawford is and, and playing a tough basketball game and making it competitive is uh, – uh, is a moral victory. Now, you don't tell that to the kids. You don't teach that to the kids. But from an outsider, uh, it, it, it says a great deal about your team and your program. He was a little frustrated. He said, had we not gotten off to a better start, we might have won that game. And Colonel Crawford's not an easy place to play. No, it's not. I mean, they've had success in a lot of sports, but their basketball has been rolling over the years. Heck, last year they're in the regional finals. I think they're in overtime with Ottawa Glandorf, chance to go down to Columbus. Uh, you know, going into Colonel Crawford, you know the gym is going to be packed. You know it's going to be a well-coached basketball team you're going to have to play. Uh, it's a weekday game. That's not an easy environment to go into. I personally like that gym. It's a smaller gym. It's an yep. older gym. Yeah, it is. It is. And it is a small gym. And I think, uh, what is that, New Robinson? Is that? Uh, North Robinson. North Robinson. I think uh, everybody in North Robinson is, is there for that game. We're going to pause now for the playing and singing of our national anthem. We are just moments away from the opening tip-off here at Frederick Town High School as the Blue Devils of Danville are in town to take on the Freddies. Frederick Town has won the last nine meetings between the two schools. Danville's last win in the series was all the way back in January of 2018. In fact, they won both games during that season, and since then, Frederick Town has pretty much owned Danville, including a, a win earlier this year. Well, you know, just, uh, and, and you're a big uh, University of Michigan fan. You know, uh, sometime the streak's going to end, and it did end <laughs> for Michigan in football, I know. But sometime this streak is going to end, and if you're a Danville player, or coach, or fan, you're thinking, uh, hey, why not tonight? Now, I don't think Danville and Fredericktown are quite the rivals that Ohio State <laughs> and Michigan are. But, yes, the results on the court have been uh, not so favorable for Danville, and I really liked the mindset of Steve Lyons in his first season as the head coach here. In fact, I asked him, I, I was getting some conflicting information about how many games they had won, and I asked him, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I think he was just, he's hes trying to just emphasize the process, and we're here trying to build something, and they got off to a very sluggish start, but they have responded, and they've played very well as of late. You know, I'm glad you said that because, to me, that's one ingredient of a good coach. It's going to be a successful coach. Yeah, I mean, most coaches know their record at, at, at any one time. But it tells me that he's living in the moment. And when that game Tuesday night against Cardington finished, he turned the page right away to Fredertown tonight where the kids maybe got to enjoy it, got to go in the next day talk to their girlfriends, brag about the game and all that. You know, he was, went right away and turned the page. And You know, I think that's how successful coaches have to do it. I think they're aiming some of those balls over here. Well, protect me if you would. I'm fragile, <laughs> all right? Yeah, Danville lost 
their first five games of the season, but since then they've won six of ten. One of those losses was a 72 to 61 defeat to these Freddies back in December. So even though they lost that game, they still feel that they can play with the Freddies. It's going to be a tough challenge here, though, tonight here on Frederick Town's home floor. Well, it is. Uh, anytime you play on the road, it's it's difficult. But when you play on the road against a team that's having this kind of success, their crowd, it looks like it's, what, cowboy night? I, I forgot my cowboy <laughs> hat, but it, all the kids have uh, cowboy hats on. So, Oh, I bet Adam can come up with a cowboy hat for you. Adam can come up with a lot of things. I'm not sure. <laughs> They're all legal, and I want them, but, you know, I, I think Adam can do it, our illustrious producer. But you could see that uh, it's a good turnout from uh, the, the Fredericktown uh, faithful and especially the student section. So, you know, can Danville keep that crowd, keep the student section out of the game? Fredericktown saw a three-game winning streak come to a halt with that loss to Colonel Crawford, as we talked about on Wednesday. They lost by seven. They got off to a sluggish start. They finished strong, and they almost, Coach Dibbling told me if they had a few more minutes, he felt like they could have pulled that one out. Oh, so often if I could have a few more Just minutes. Just a couple so more often minutes. if there were a few less minutes, I would have had some more wins, maybe. <laughs> Danville with the first possession of the game and the first three in the air and good by Levi Lyons. And that's what they did Tuesday night. They did a great job of penetrating the paint drawing the defense, kicking out. And I told you they shot 44%. You also talked about this young man here, Cade Carpenter, misses his first field goal attempt of the night. I think one thing that impressed me about him was his passing ability, especially a skip pass, a pass from one side of the court to the other. He gets it there in a, in a split second. Oh, another open shooter, no hesitation. That time the defender kind of lost his balance and the shot did not fall by Max Payne, but we've got a foul coming the other way. Fredericktown will keep the basketball just underway here in Fredericktown. The Blue Devils with an early 3-0 lead. And remember we talked in the pregame, one key we think for Danville is limit to one shot each time down. Last time on the missed shot by Cade Carpenter, Danville was able to rebound. One shot. Harry Carpenter forces it inside, and Danville with the ball off the turnover. Both teams playing man-to-man -man defense. Again, Tuesday night saw a lot of penetration and kick by Danville. Going to see a bump on Trevor Bellman. That's his first. Both coaches would like to play a little bit more up-tempo. Steve Lyons told me that because they were not able to get the start that he wanted because of football, it really put them behind in some things that he wanted to put in as a first-year head coach here. And one of those was the style of play, especially offensively. Well, and I can understand that, but hopefully with Christmas vacation and maybe having uh, more time to practice, uh, they were able to get some of that in. Up ahead to Carpenter. It's knocked away. A nice play from behind by Max Payne. That was great hustle. That is what you preach to your defenders. Never give up on the ball. And that's like two points on the offense. Whoa. And Payne took a shot in the there. face, and he is down. He took a hard shot to the face. Let's take a look here. He's number 11. The Freddies with their third turnover. And he is up, and they got his bell rung a little bit. But well, it's good to see him walking off the floor. Coach Lyons goes over to him and tells him, come on, man, that football, you got hit like that all the time, didn't you? He's like, but I had pads on. Yeah, that's football, right. Coach. <laughs> that, was a, uh, that was a hard pop. That was. That was. Danville still with the early lead. And Payne comes out, and Nate Stevens, the junior, in, and a turnover, and Danville coughs it up. Fredericktown still looking for their first points of the game as we're at 5.47 to go in the first quarter. For that possession, Fredericktown did a good job of trapping 
the handoff on ball screen and uh, caused the turnover. But you're right, looking for their first points. They've only gotten one shot up. Three turnovers on the first uh, few possessions. Well, and that one shot was a three by Cade Carpenter, and I think that Steve Lyons will take that. Yeah. Further outside he is, the advantage Danville. Up top to Mast. There's Carpenter again on the top of the left wing. He'll put it on the floor and finish strong to the hole. It was a good finish. Good dribble penetration and good finish at the basket. And a bump and the second foul on Trevor Bellman. We mentioned free throw shooting at the beginning. Danville is 65% free throw shooting team. We've seen so many teams that shoot in the 50% range. I'm sure Danville would love to get to the line, get some freebies. Best team in the KMAC is Mount Gilead at almost 72%. That's good free throw shooting. I believe for Fredericktown, there's maybe East Knox is the only team that shoots at a uh, worse percentage. Here comes another trap on the ball. Quick hands. And inside, and the bucket by Nate Stevens. Well, I tell you what, that ball just found him. He was right place at the right time and laid it in. Tell you what, looking for the charge, the offensive put back. And two misses by Mass, but Tegan Rule there for the follow. It's out of bounds, and it'll go to Danville. I really like what Danville is doing defensively as they are putting a lot of pressure. And we talked about limiting the one shot, but there Fredericktown had three shots at it and could not convert any of them. Exactly, but they do get the luck of the bounce out of bounds. But maybe to change tempo, Fredericktown comes up with a little pressure, forces a turnover. This is something Derek Dibling wants to do, or Dibling, excuse me, wants to do. He wants to force that tempo and speed you up and force some turnovers or force you into shots that you're not comfortable taking. And yep. there they produce the turnover. That time it was very, very effective. Lester from the free throw line, his first bucket. That was just too easy. You're right. It was from the free throw line. There was not enough pressure on him and he just knocked down the jumper. Now it looks like uh, they're going with a little man-to-man, -man, maybe a little man run and trap. There they go. A little bit too aggressive on the ball. Fouls on Ben Mast. Nibling told me he loves the mental makeup of this team, very unselfish. You know, they, don't, they don't have that, what you would call a scorer, but right. he has multiple guys who can score, and they're incredibly unselfish, and they will pass the ball around, get it to the open guy, and you talked about a guy like Luke Bean coming in off the bench, and he was the hot hand. They kept feeding him the basketball. Uh, he was feeling it that night, I tell you. He was our MVP that night, and deservingly so. Dibbling in his seventh season. The Freddies have won 83 games in that span. He's a 2001 graduate of Ridgedale High School where he was part of a 25-1 and district championship team. There's a good look at Dibbling in his seventh season. Graduated from Ohio State in 2006, but I won't hold that against him. <laughs> Try to force it down. Spinner in the lane doesn't go, but an offensive rebound for the Blue Devils and... They're going to have a jump ball. Spencer Payne, yeah, he did. Good dribble penetration, went one-on-one -on -one in the lane and kind of a step-back uh, shot, but just couldn't connect on it. Frederick Town has yet to lead. Tegan Rule strong inside, kicks it out to Carpenter. And Carpenter from about eight feet can't get it to drop. Danville does a good job, one shot. Limit, come down with the basketball. Another Payne. turnover. We've had our share of turnovers so far. Rule. And Mast all alone for three, and he was, he was almost too open. Yeah, I don't think he had a clean catch of the basketball. He kind of bobbled it. I don't know if that uh, 
Got his feet out of whack, but not able to knock down that three. A lot of times, if you bobble a pass, you know, it, it's tough to, to get it back and get it to where you want to shoot the basketball under control. Good job of run and jump. Almost caused the turnover. Instead, a layup. Kendall I think, Carter. I think Frederictown's going to stay in that. I mean, they're close to getting turnovers. Up ahead to Tegan Rule, who lays it up and in. And did you like that pass? That's what I was talking about. Nice pass from 25 feet away to an open man for a layup. Frederick Town pulls to within one. Trap, a little rotation. Carter for three. And chases down his miss. It goes out of bounds. This should go to Frederick Town. Last touch by the junior, Kendall Carter. There's a good sign. Max Payne checking back in. Looks like everything is where it's supposed to be on that forehead. (laughs) Either the forehead, the nose, the jaw, or all of the above. We'll see in his first shot whether he's feeling good or not. Steve Lyons told me, he says, you know, I've got a a team full of football players. They come out, they play hard. Rule inside. And grabs his own miss, powers it back up, and he draws the foul from Walker Weckerson. And that was good offensive possession. He had good position inside around the block area. uh, Took him one-on-one. The first shot didn't go, but able to get an offensive rebound and Instead of just throwing it back up on the backboard, he saw that he had room to dribble. He just went to great uh, position, and, you know, that, that's tough to block a shot in there unless you are a true shot blocker. And I'm not sure we have too many out here today, if any. But free throw shooting, not Fredericktown strength. Well, he splits the pair. Rule now with three. Talked about shot blockers. Cade Carpenter with 13. That leads Frederick Town. And the Freddies all over Danville in the half court. But a shot inside doesn't go. And the rebound and a foul as Carpenter went up and grabbed it. Again, I think this pressure by Fredericktown is good. Yeah, they have a few fouls. They, they get it right here, but they are so close to getting a turnover. Danville is not handling the pressure well. They're dribbling against the pressure. They're throwing up over the pressure, and uh, Fredericktown is very, very close to rotating and getting some breakouts. Foul was on Lions. It's his first. Carpenter again for three. A pick and pop. Not able to hit the three. We have our first run out. And a floater in the lane drops. That was and a, Spencer Payne gets his first bucket. And you're right. That was a floater. Nice shot. Carpenter thought about the three and throws it up with his left hand. That was a good job. Just kind of looked at the three and that draw the defense to him. And one dribble got the ball right to the basket. We are tied at nine as we approach a minute to go in the first quarter. Ball out of bounds. It will stay with Danville. I think that's smart by by Cade Carpenter. You've you've missed a couple of threes. So why not put the ball on the floor and get it to the hole? Adam, our producer, with a good point. This is almost like watching the Ravens and the Steelers. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like either of those teams, though. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. But I do like these teams. There we go. Ball batted around. The intensity is where Adam was going. Both these teams really playing hard in the first minute, first quarter of this ball game. And Lester with a steal. And here come the Freddies in transition. And Carpenter lays it up and in. He's got six. Nice run out, get the turnover. And a five second call and the ball's gonna go to Fredericktown. So they have an opportunity to add to an early two point lead. 
Now it'll be interesting. They have a two-point lead, 42.3 left in the first quarter. You have momentum on your side. Do you hold it? Go for the last shot? Carpenter says, nope. nope. I'm taking a one-on-one. Nice, nice follow. Tip. By Tegan Rule, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Exactly what Danville didn't want. Number one, offensive rebounding by Fredericktown, and number two, getting the student section from the Freddies in play. But that's the way it is right now, and it's time for Danville to make a play here in the last 35 seconds to Maybe break a little momentum. Maybe even get a little momentum going into the quarter in their time. Rule is now two for three from the line. And Danville Whoa. having a hard time with this pressure. They finally get it across. Another three in the air, and that one drops. The second for Levi Lyons. And that's a great job. You, they needed something on that possession. Levi Lyons, good ball movement, good passing. Fredericktown comes down, scores. We're down the last 10 seconds. Here comes Danville. Ball batted around, and what are they going to call? Foul's going to be called on Luke Bean. That'll be his first. Not, not really you can sure. see the replay right here. Well, it's... Kind of going after a loose basketball, but see if Danville can make a play right here. Good pressure. Uh Uh-oh. Another three in the air. It's no good, and that will do it for the first quarter. Fredericktown with a four-point lead as we head to the second. You're watching High School Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. I'm Coach Derek Dibbling. You're watching Fredericktown Basketball on the OH Report. Brian Harder, Greg Collins in Fredericktown as we get ready to start the second quarter. The Freddies with a four-point lead after trailing much of the first quarter. Carpenter and Rule each with six in the opening period and a turnover for Danville. And the Freddies are going to get it back as they get their first possession of the second quarter for Danville. And again, the pressure pays off for Fredericktown. Levi Lyons with a couple of threes to lead the Blue Devils. Too many wasted possessions by Danville. Nine turnovers right now. That's just giving the ball away, giving Fredericktown extra chances. Carpenter spins from the block, and he's tough to guard. He is. He does a nice move, squares up, and just jumps over, elevates over the defense, and has a nice, sweet jump shot. Carpenter at 6-6, a tough matchup inside. And a lean and a foul, and that could be on Tegan Rule. That's his first. Good penetration right here and a step through. I think Fredericktown forgot when he jump stopped. I think Fredericktown forgot to uh, maybe get somebody right in front of the, the offensive player, but took advantage and got the foul, and this is one area that, that, that Dansville can be prosperous, and that's at the free throw line. 
There's five team fouls right now for Fredericktown, so be aggressive. Uh, get to the free throw line, but you got to knock them down when you get there. Dustin Beckett misses his first free throw attempt. But I would be surprised if the Freddies take off any pressure. Their trapping has been very effective. Good offensive rebound, better defense. So Fredericktown comes away with it, and another wasted opportunity by the Blue Devils. But they play hard at the defensive end and come up with another turnover. Up ahead and <laughs> up and in by Spencer Payne, and Coach has got a little chuckle. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know if he really wanted to shoot when he got a little bump, but he was able to get it up high off the, rip, off the backboard and in. Luke Bean with a three that doesn't go, and it's out of bounds. It will stay at this end of the floor. You can just sense the football mentality on both sides here tonight for both Fredericktown and Danville. Yeah, anytime there's a loose basketball, you know there's going to be a player or two that are going to go after it. Coach Lyons said it's it's almost a double-edged sword. You know, you, you want them to play well and, and have success on the football field, but then it cuts into what he wants to do with his basketball program. Oh, no question. Carpenter open for three. He and knocks Carpenter. down his first three, but you saw a very nice touch there. Very nice follow through. Carpenter now with 11. Nice hesitation dribble. Carpenter scored 24 in their win over Danville earlier this year. You see the replay right there. Good job of, of hesitation dribble. Got the defense to stand and took it right to the basket, being aggressive. And again, chance to get some freebies at the uh, free throw line. Yeah, if you're looking for finesse basketball, I don't think you're going to see it here tonight. This is good physical basketball. Wesley Payne, the freshman, gets his first bucket of the night. You look at these two teams, and you could tell that both schools have a weight room. They're strong young men out there. And he splits the pair, and the rebound falls into the hands of Brady Lester. Fredertown's got numbers. Penetration kick. Lester from 11 feet. And nice he has yet out. to really find his stroke offensively. Levi Lyons with a great checkout on that possession. Three in the air at the other end doesn't go, but another offensive rebound put up and another by three Wekeser attempt, that doesn't go. Another board. Boy, Danville crashing the offensive glass. And that time it paid off. Pays off where they get the uh, out of bounds off Fredertown, so they'll get an extra possession here. Frederick Tao with a six-point lead. I told you on Tuesday night, Danville really, they shot 44% from the three, really looked good from outside the arc. Tonight, you know, they're not shooting it quite as well, but we're still uh, early in the second. Lions with a couple of threes. Nice job of penetration by Spencer Payne. Shakes off the ball screen. He's got six. Good job of getting to the paint and playing off two feet. Ball inside. Xavier Mullins tries to split a couple of Blue Devils defenders. It will stay at this end of the floor. And I think Levi Lyons just said, listen, I see the ball, so I might as well grab it. <laughs> That's what he's been taught in all his sports. Danville up in your grill defensively. Off balance shot doesn't go. It's out of bounds, and it's going to go to Danville. Ooh. It looked like it falling up here. Yeah, yeah, I, was, I thought somebody pushed me. It looked like Kendall Carter that time for Danville when that ball went up was not going to be denied. He was going to go through anybody he could to get it. 
Here they break the pressure. Good passing. Finish. Levi Lyons with his first two. He now with eight points, and it's back to within two for Danville. Mullins on the block. And a three in the air does not go for Luke Bean. Long shots, long rebound, and Danville's there to get it. And that's, again, limit Fredericktown to one shot down each time. Good ball screen. Tried to look inside. It falls into the hands of Ben Mast. Ben Mast with a good defensive play and gets rewarded with a layup at the other end. And Danville lucky to get the ball in bounds. Good rotation. Great defense that time by Dom Thompson. Another turnover up ahead to Luke Beans. Lays it in. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Luke Bean gets his first bucket. And he'll look for the three-point play. So Danville makes a uh, possession where they draw within two and right array. Fredericktown forces two turnovers, two layups, and now a chance at the free throw line to extend the lead to six. Or to seven here. Max Payne back in for the Blue Devils. Cade Carpenter barking directions as he goes down to take position on the block. Bean at the line, a 5'10 senior. And makes the three-point play. And that pushes the lead to 26-19. Nothing open in the lane. Ball screen action. You see a lot of trapping off the ball screens for Fredertown. Three in the air on the left side. Does it go? The rebound down to Bellman. And Bellman up ahead to Carpenter. Carpenter. That was a tough off-balance shot by Gabe Carpenter. He wanted a foul, didn't get it. That was a great job of stepping through, getting a little space, and muscling it up. Another body hits the deck. That time, Max Payne just said, I'm taking the ball to the hole. If somebody wants to get in front of me, fine. Nobody wanted to get in front. Split the defense. Got the foul. Now he goes to the line shooting one-on-one. Fouls on Bellman. That's his third. So Bellman has to come out of the ball game. Max Payne at the line, had 13 in the first game against the Freddies. Has yet to score tonight, and there he gets his first point. Danville so far has played uh, solely at the quarter court, played man-to-man defense. A lot of pressure, as you've mentioned. I'm sure they'll stay with that. Again, force the perimeter shot. Rule splits two defenders, dumps it off. They're going to call an offensive foul or a block. Looks like offensive. So that's foul number two on number two. And I think that might have been Levi Lyons who stepped in front there. So Danville has a chance here to cut into the seven-point deficit that they're in. I think they realize now that when you're using ball screens, Fredertown's being very aggressive and trapping it. Here they come out and they trap it again hard, but they handle it well. And then they turn it over. Great job rotating. Fredericktown with numbers in transition, a left ballot, or left-handed shot by Lee. Luke Bean, excuse me. That was the only way he could get the ball up there. I think he was under the backboard by the time he received that. And I believe that is going to be on Carpenter. No, they're going to call that on Mast. That'll be his second. 
So Max Payne back to the free throw line as they're talking to Cade Carpenter to make sure he's okay. I think that might have been one of those you, you need to walk that off for a minute. Well, I I, I think that the, the official, you're right, <laughs> asked if he's okay, and he answered in a and they're both smiling, a different voice. Yeah. Payne with two points, both from the strike. And he rims that around, and he'll get another free throw attempt. Payne, a perfect four for four from the stripe. His free throw shooting has kept it in it. And Danville comes out and do a little 1-3-1. One, one. We'll see if they trap out of it or just try to match up, force some perimeter shooting. Fairtown's going to be a little patient. They have the lead. Ball tipped force out of bounds. So it'll go to Danville. So Fredericktown struggled in that possession against the zone. That's the second possession they've been in that zone. The first one they drew the charge. This one they force another turnover. Whistle away from the ball. When Max Payne, number 11 for Danville, decides he's going to penetrate and he's going to get the ball to a certain spot, there's no denying he's going to get there. And he is drawing the defense uh, pressure and drawing the foul. and He's going to the line now to, I think he scored their last four points off from the free throw line. Well, he is now five for five and what also is now a problem for Fredericktown, Ben Mast and Trevor Bellman each with three fouls. Well, Danville does like to dribble penetrate, but Max Payne doing a real good job with dribble penetration. Timeout taken by Fredericktown. Two minutes to go in the first half. The Freddies with a six-point lead, but two of their starting backcourt mates, each with three fouls as we head to intermission. So you got to be careful here, especially as much as Danville is attacking the paint. You can't have those guards picking up fouls. No, no, you, you're exactly right, especially against a team who is a – Fairly good free throw shooting team. Uh, but you don't want players, as you said, you don't want players going into the third period with with four fouls, three at the very max. But somehow, I'm sure Coach Dibbling is talking about how are we going to cut down dribble penetration because we're fouling on dribble penetration, especially Max Payne. You know, are we going to get in front? Are we going to go zone? You know, how are we going to cut down that? I think they were the most effective early on with their full court pressure and their trapping. But because of fouls, and again, double bonus right now for Danville, you know, Coach Dibbling might be thinking, no, we want to stay away from being aggressive this last 210 of the uh, second period. I think it's going to be an important 210. Down six for Danville. Can they uh, put a little dent into the... uh, into the uh, deficit they have right here. Somebody's bribing you with food. Well, that's not hard to do, <laughs> especially candy. Adam is uh, he, hes a good guy. I take back everything I said about him <laughs> that he knows that I've said about him. Carpenter. Nice kick. And Bean cannot find the range from outside. Another offensive rebound doesn't go. And a wasted opportunity for Fredericktown and Danville with a chance here as we approach a minute and a half before halftime. And a loose three, and it doesn't go, and Carpenter with a rebound. I think everybody for Danville has a green light to shoot the three. Coach is uh, very easy with his. Kendall Carter is really controlling the boards down here for Danville. Penetrate, kick, shot. Does not go, and that would have been a good opportunity for Max Payne. Nice pass. Up ahead, off balance, doesn't go. Ball batted around, and it stays and still doesn't drop for Fredericktown. 
There is a lid over the Fredericktown basket. There is. And a blocking foul at this end of the floor. And that will stop the clock with 102. Watch to go. the replay. First, Kendall Carter hits the ground. That guy spends more time on the ground. And then a good penetration, drawing the foul. Gets to go to the line to shoot two. Again, Danville cutting into the deficit at the free throw line. And like you said, down at the offensive end, Fredericktown just can't buy a basket right now. Walker Weckeser, who had 26 the first time these two teams played, has not scored tonight. Now there goes the uh, my partner's jinx. Well, usually when you say that, then they do the opposite. Well, then that, they score. That's, that's true. That's true. I think that was a sour patch. Gummy bear. If he was I hope not. There. Let's not waste those. <laughs> you know, Adam lives on those. That's his dinner. Now, the last few possessions, Danville had some success playing 1-3-1. Do they drop back? It looks like they're dropping back to their 1-3-1 again. Kendall Carter right there in the middle of that 1-3-1. Levi Lyons on the back side. Well, they force turnover. another turnover. So if you're Coach Dibbling, you know number one what you're going to talk about at halftime. How are we going to attack the 1-3-1 zone? Teams don't use that a whole lot. And Fredericktown obviously does not like it. No. So far, no. Five-point lead for the Freddies. They swing it into the left corner. Nice extra pass to get the open shot. Just not able to connect. Carpenter will slow it down as we approach 20 seconds to go before halftime. You can see that uh, Danville goes after a missed shot, goes into their man-to-man. -man. And I think this is wise. Go for the last shot, especially when you've had a lid on your side. Carpenter guarded by Lions. It'd be tough. Good Gets defense. the shot off, and it does not go, and that will do it. The first two quarters in the books, and Fredericktown with a five-point lead as we head to the intermission. You're watching Boys High School Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Playoff time, baby. Games, snacks, drinks. I mean, what else can you ask for, bro? Really? Hey, pass me a Pepsi. I mean, can you drink any louder? That's how I drink. Loud like that? I drink loud. I like to enjoy it. Toss me some ways. Did you eat any louder? It's normal to eat loud. Drinking loud makes no sense. Peyton, Eli, road trip to the Super Bowl. Hard pass, playoffs are on. You're paying for that door, by the way. I got a bus, the bus has got a bus, let's go. Can we go see the bus? What up, Eli? Victor Cruz, I miss you, buddy. I miss you too, man. Super Bowl, baby, let's go. We're not going. I'm going to get more chips and drinks. Do not leave this room. I got you, I got you. Whoa. Super Bowl, here we go. Are you kidding me? Technically, I didn't leave the room. I'm calling mom. After I finish these chips. 
So much longer. You drive weird. Plus, are we there yet? No. Hey, bus, we gotta pull over for some more chips and drinks. Oh, you got it. Hey, guys, look who I found. Bradshaw? <laughs> hey, guys, got room for one more? Got Doritos? Got Mountain Dew. What, do we really want to bring him? It might start to feel crowded. I mean, maybe if we had a little... Oh, please don't. You know, you Don't say it. Salsa. Oh. Ah, I love me some salsa. All right, I got an idea. We got one seat left, and it's special just for you. Let's do it. Ah! This is like a convertible. It's up a whole lot better. Good for you, you're happy and healthy, not me. If you ever cared to ask, good for you, you're doing good. I know without me, baby, God, I wish that I could do that. I lost my mind last night, and I'm crying on my floor. I'm just so affected, I really don't care. It does kind of open things up a little bit. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Enough about me, let's start the show, starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told her ma that I was soon, soon. Knew as a child, back in the womb, yeah. oh. Told her step back, I need my broom, broom. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom. I'm in a whip, so I got a zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way, they Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. And don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision, they looking so blind. I hit my lawyer, don't got a time. Crossing my teeth and he died.
It is halftime here at Fredericktown where the Freddies with a 30 to 25 lead. Brian Harder, Greg Collins, and if you happen to be here at the game, um, it was a little loud in the gym about five minutes ago. They put on a great show though, didn't they? They did, it looked like an alumni band or something. They had anybody with an instrument in Knox County and they let them into the gym and it was the loudest halftime show indoors that I think I've ever heard in a high school game. But I was more impressed with the movement. I mean, they move, I, I tell you, whoever was uh, uh, putting it together did a great job and, and, and those kids did a, a super job. So the Freddies talking about doing a super job. They are doing a good enough job to keep that 8-0 mark in the K-Mac as they are at halftime here and with a five-point lead over Danville, but Coach Danville came to play. They did, and you look at their turnovers first. 11 turnovers. Yeah, that's more than what you want in a half. But you remember in the first possession of the second quarter, they had their ninth turnover. So they went seven plus minutes with only two turnovers, thus, and they were aggressive with the basketball, thus able to get to the free throw line and, and connect on six of 10, which is just a little bit below their average. Levi Lyons with the two threes that you see there for Danville. He leads them in scoring with eight. Cade Carpenter leads all scores with 13. And he has really, when he has gotten the ball, especially down on the block, he has been able to do whatever he really wants to do. Danville is holding their own on the glass, as you see the rebounding tied at 15. Well, there's there's not a player on Danville that I've seen so far that can contest a Cade Carpenter shot when he gets the ball to a position where he wants it. And you're right. A couple of times he's had some nice offensive moves to get to the hoop. A couple of times he just dribbled down to get good possession and squared up and jumped over the defender. And he's also knocked down some threes. But he, by far and away, is is an outstanding athlete. But he has the size, the height, and the weight advantage over anybody else that I see on the court. Tonight's game being brought to you by Jesse's Custom Creations. Come to Jesse's Custom Creations for all of your customized apparel and fan gear needs, including embroidery for any school or occasion. You can find them at facebook.com slash groups 2002 877, and there's a bunch of numbers there I'm not even going to try to read. (laughs) By Mike's Marathon out of Fredericktown, towing and repair by Knox Community Hospital and by Frito-Lay. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins getting ready to start the second half. The Freddies. 16 minutes away from their ninth win in the K-Mac, but they're going to have to fight for it if the first half was any indication against a pesky Danville Blue Devils team. And remember, we talked about Danville's goal. Get it to the fourth period. Get it to the fourth quarter where it's close. Maybe put a little pressure on Fredericktown. Maybe make it in a free throw shooting contest, which should favor the Blue Devils. Good turnaround jumper that time. Good patience by Danville. They're drawn within three. Spencer Payne now with eight. And it's a 30 to 27 lead for Fredericktown. Carpenter up and under, but he follows his miss. And it won't drop. He's fouled, though. And he will go to the line for the first time tonight. I was a little confused. It, it, it kind of looked like some players were playing man for Danville. Some were playing a little bit of zone, but... Either way, Kate Carpenter uh, just muscled it up, missed the first shot, as you said, but gets the offensive rebound and gets to go to the line. Spencer Payne with the foul and Carpenter with the miss. It's going to be interesting, Brian. I mean, because of fouls and some key players with three fouls, does Fredericktown go back to the aggressive pressure, trapping on ball screens, Full court pressure, doing some trapping, which I think was did some pretty good things. Uh, Or do they try to play a little bit more conservative? Carpenter now with 14. Here's on the ball screen. Good roll. And a miss on a inside shot by Kendall Carter. Mast all the way down to the block. Gets it to Lester. Doesn't go, but Lester fights for his miss. 
and splits two defenders and gets it to drop. Good offensive rebound by Lester that time, staying with it. So far early, two, maybe three offensive rebounds by Fredericktown this quarter. Carpenter with his presence felt defensively. He pushes it up ahead to Lester. Well, I think if uh, good timeout by Danville, I think if uh, Spencer Payne had his uh, to do it all over again, instead of putting up that shot, he had an open player inside, maybe a little dump off inside for a basket. I don't know if we can get the replay back to the missed shot there at the end. I might be asking a little much of Adam, but this possession, this bucket was all about Cade Carpenter and the pressure he puts on defensively. There, there we you see. see the shot. He gets his rebound, pushes ahead, and then gets the assist on the nice pass. Yeah, he does. He has a good over-the-head pass. Uh, strong man. And I talked about it a couple of weeks ago that so many young people will throw a skip pass from their waist. They start the pass from their waist, which makes it a, a balloon pass, just too much up in the air. He gets that ball over his head, uses his forearms, and th just zips that basketball. Very strong young man, of course, an outstanding football player for Fredericktown. And I guess a baseball player. There's a good look, and you got to love the hair. Well, you uh, got to love the hair. Almost 12 points, six boards, 13 blocks. And, and even though he didn't get the block on that possession, he altered the shot. Right. But, Brian, you're talking to a guy that likes any hair, so <laughs> I, I can't really speak. <laughs> He's just almost showing off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Frederick down to a little switching on the on the ball screen. Another fall away. That's and a Spencer tough shot. Spencer Payne's starting to feel it now. He's got 10. And Spencer has done a few of those today, and that's not an easy shot. The little step back, jump shot in the paint. Lester went baseline and tried to force it inside, and Danville with another turnover. Walker Wesser with a good job of rotating and getting in the passing lane. Left open for three. And Carpenter fights for the rebound. It comes down. Good outlet pass. And Carpenter again, and the second effort by Cade Carpenter. And the long pass, turnover. Fredericktown right away with the ball, just takes it right to the hoop. Being aggressive. Lester now in double figures with 10, and the lead is 10. And Danville's already used one timeout this quarter. I know Coach would like to keep him if he could. And Carpenter again making his presence felt defensively. You know, and, and you see Kate Carpenter, he's rotating quick to help on the uh, post entry anytime the ball gets inside. Danville's got to kick it to the open man. Rule can't get it to go. Lester with another offensive rebound, kicks it up. It's in by Trevor Bellman. Big three, and they've got momentum going. They got their crowd into it. Danville needs something good to happen. Now they'll get it again in transition up ahead to Rule. And Rule did not want to get the contact and commit the offensive foul, but he commits one defensively. And that's his third. They have momentum on their side right now, Fredericktown, trying to take advantage of it, getting a little bit of pressure on the basketball. The last turnover was caused by good rotation, good help defense. So the foul situation for Fredericktown, Rule with three, Mast with three, and Bellman with three. Three of your starters with three personals. Another floater in the lane. I and guess Spencer who. Payne is starting to feel it. He does a great job. When he gets that ball into the paint, he knows how to finish. And Carpenter lays it up, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line. I think the uh, C just parted there, and he <laughs> took advantage of it. And somebody got an arm in there, and yeah, that arm's not going to uh, deter him from getting the ball up to the hoop. Nate Stevens, the guilty party, his first foul. Carpenter leads all scores with 18. You know, I really thought that, that Danville would come out and show a little 1-3-1 this quarter, but 
they haven't had a chance to play much quarter court defense. Frederictown Grin doing a great job of getting the ball out on transition. <laughs> Excuse me. Getting some good looks and finishing. And a foul away from the ball on Rule. That's number four on Tegan Rule. And that you do not want to see. He's going to check out. He scored six. So the lineup gets a little smaller now for Fredericktown. Well, can Danville take advantage of this? Dribble handoff, penetration, another turnover caused by Fredericktown. Ball. They got numbers, nice pass, Bad. another nice pass, just can't finish. Oh, and Carpenter smacks his head hard on the floor. This is one tough customer, and there's another one. He's going to have to walk off again. <laughs> he took it on both ends. <laughs> It was a jump ball, and the <laughs> possession arrow goes to the Freddies. They got a 14-point lead, but more importantly, they got momentum on their side right now. Carpenter off the inbounds pass. Yeah, he's not hurting. Nonchalantly catches a 12-footer, turns, knocks it down. He's got 21. They got off his feet, and that may be on Carpenter. That's his second. That was a good job by uh, Walker Wexer, just getting the ball to the paint, seeing that he had a bigger player that rotated over on him, gave him a pump fake and took it up strong and gets a chance to go to the free throw line. Wexer now with two points. I've been mispronouncing his last name, but it's Wexer, correct? Wexer. You're going to have to remind me in about two minutes. Wekeser now with three. He has yet to hit a field goal. And the lead is 14. Backdoor cut. Nice pass. He's fouled again, and he will go to the line. Now the defender on Cade Carpenter, once he passed the basketball, you see, kind of got caught ball watching. So Cade went back door, received a beautiful pass. Now a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, and this is, you talked about the experience that Fredericktown has. These kids have played with each other for a long time. Right. They know each other. They know what they're going to do in certain situations. You know, when you have uh, seven-plus seniors out on a basketball team, yeah, you expect to uh, make some plays that a younger team would not make. And, they're making plays here in this uh, third period that they certainly didn't make the last half of the second quarter and for most of the first quarter. But right now they're they're putting it together. They're getting the ball to the basket. Besides the 1-3, everything seems to be right at the hoop. Well, and even though three of their starters are in foul trouble, the one who isn't in foul trouble is the one doing all the damage offensively. Well, that that, you know, when you have your – Big stud that's not in foul trouble and he can just continue to play hard. That that's an advantage for your team. So now he will go to the line. You know, we'll see what kind of answers uh, Danville has. It's 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 a tough situation for Coach Lyons. Again, good timeout. To maybe get the crowd out of it a little bit. Maybe to break a little bit of momentum. Maybe to calm his team down. They've had. Uh, Fair amount of turnovers this quarter. They've had five here about four and a half minutes into the quarter. I don't know what they're talking about here, but Carpenter will go to the line. He's got 23. And make that 24. Now the officials are talking to Derek Dibbling about something. I don't Maybe he has something on his jersey or something, so they're going to have to make a, a substitution. And Xavier Mullins will come in, and Carpenter will come out briefly. They let him shoot the free throw, but then they took him out of the ball game. So here's an opportunity for Danville. 
with Carpenter now on the bench. But they're going to have to take care of the basketball and get a good look. Their best looks have been paying, getting the ball into the paint and shooting runners, floaters. Here's another good trap, rotating over. Foul's going to be on Xavier Mullins. You know, Danville's going to doing a good job of attacking. Anytime you play a team that traps, when you're able to get that ball out of a trap, well, you have for a split second, you have a four on three. Well, attack, attack, and that's what Danville's been doing a good job if they can get the ball out of the trap. Nice move. Can't finish. Mullins with a big rebound. Fairtown doing a nicer, better, nice, a much better job of uh, transition this third period. Lester inside. And Mast finally comes away with it. A three in the corner doesn't go, but Mullins with an offensive rebound. And this will be on Danville. Well, at halftime, I forget what the rebounding was, but it was relatively close. This quarter has been dominated by the Freddies, doing a great job on the offensive boards and handling it at the defensive end. Levi Lyons now with three fouls, so he'll come out. Kendall Carter comes back in. Brady Lester gets two more. And it's now a 19-point lead and a whistle inside. Cade Carpenter is back on the bench, so we'll see if he comes back in. That was a good job by, by Danville, uh, Max Payne, dribble penetrating. He was able to go north-south. It's hard to give help when a pin, when there's a straight line drive. That's a straight line drive to help defense tries to get there. They draw the foul. Uh, it's difficult to give help on that straight line drive. Gets a chance to go to the free throw line, connects on the first. He seemed to make a living at the free throw line in the second quarter. All six of his points have come from the strike. And he splits the pair. That's the Brian Harder jinx that I know. <laughs> That's my stroke from the free throw line. <laughs> Looking inside to Mullins. Nice. Mullins with a strong take inside with the right hand. It was a strong move and a good move because he caught it, looked to see there was no help coming to defend him, so he used his dribble to get a better position. And a travel and another turnover for Danville. Now again, we said that Danville just wanted to get that ball, ball game into the fourth quarter. Now they're down 20. Fredericktown is looking to uh, go for the kill here in the third period. They have outscored Danville 24 to nine in the third quarter. Mullins. Nice penetration kick and Another offensive rebound, and the possession stays alive. That's Bean with the miss. It's out of bounds off of Danville. Yep, right off the noggin. See, that's why I don't have hair. I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> and that was very, very close. Yeah. Running America's play. I think everybody in America runs that play out of bounds. Now Danville gets a run out. They have numbers. Nice job defensively as Dom Thompson sprints a lane back. Max Payne. We'll take it out of bounds. 140 to go in the third quarter. Freddie's looking for win number nine in the K-Mac. They have not lost a conference game this year. 
Danville looking for a little scoring this quarter. They only have four points. I take that back. They have nine points. But it feels like four. It feels like four when Fredericktown scoring in the 20s. Another turnover. And the Freddies will get it back up 20. Nice Dean set with an play. off-balance three. It was a good look, but he didn't get his feet set, and he was kind of drifting. It was a nice set play. They had a dribble handoff, and they brought Bean off a staggered screen, and you're right. I don't think he got his feet totally under himself to get up a, as good a shot as I think he would like. Nice look inside. That was. Nice penetration, nice pass. He thread the needle that time. Tell you what, Max Payne is playing with every ounce of energy that that young man has. Lester, and loses the handle. Nice and baseball pass. Payne. And Payne misses the layup, but he gets the offensive rebound, puts it up and in. Getting ready for a little football playoff action tomorrow. <laughs> this kind of passes. Payne now with 14. Frederick Town again doing this with three of their starters with at least three fouls, and a foul is going to be called on Wesley Payne. I think it's a good move by Fredericktown right here. I think it looked like Coach Dibbling was willing to go for the last shot of the quarter. Uh, Danville scored the last two possessions. You have the lead. You have momentum. You have a couple pretty good players sitting on the bench. You might as well just go for the last shot if you can handle the ball pressure. Trevor Bellman is on the floor with three fouls. They get it into Lester outside to Bean. And there's another scramble for the ball, and a timeout's going to be called by Fredericktown. So with five seconds to go, Fredericktown with a 54-38 lead. They have three more, three more conference games to go after tonight. Right against I, the way I look, the teams that are second, third, and fourth in conference play. Mount Gilead, Northmore, and Centerburg, and those won't be easy outs either. No, they won't, but if they get the win tonight, they'll have a two-game lead. Centerburg, who we I watched was an outstanding game a couple of weeks ago. They get Centerburg here on their home court. Uh, that's always an advantage. They're at Mount Gilead on Tuesday. That's their next game. They don't play tomorrow. So they have an opportunity to rest up for the Indians. And the Indians have been playing well. In Northmore, we haven't seen them this year, but, you know, I know they're well coached. And I know they're going to put it forth a great effort. Why haven't we seen Northmore this year? We saw Northmore I last have year a few Travis times. Travis Berardi, that's why. Travis, <laughs> he's Mr. Northmore. He is the Golden Knight. And good defensive possession. Five count on Fredertown. Great defensive possession by Danville. Now they have a chance to go for the last shot. Boy, would they have be feeling good going into the timeout if they can knock down a three here in the last 5.2. It's not going to happen. Ball knocked away by Bean, and even though he didn't get it, now they have to go the length of the floor. They do. 2.8 seconds left. So a, a really good hustle play. Even though they don't get the ball, they extend the floor. Payne launches from half court. It doesn't go. 
And we've got one more quarter of basketball from Fredericktown. The Freddies on top, 54-38. We'll be back right after this. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. I'm Coach Derek Dibling. You're watching Fredericktown Basketball on the OH Report. Fredericktown, eight minutes away from win number 10 overall and win number nine in the K-Mac. Off balance shot by Payne doesn't go, but another offensive rebound by Danville. And let's see if they have a run in them to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, unfortunately, they start with a turnover and they had enough of those. Ah, missed our first dunk of the night. Danville right away down the court, misses a layup. Boy, Cade Carpenter would love to have that one back, wouldn't he? There he gets the block at the other end. Not as sexy as a dunk, but he'll take right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're, you're wondering what's going through Coach Dibling's mind. Like, hey, listen, fellas, we got a 16-point lead. We're going for a conference championship. Let's make the layups. Foul on Luke Bean, that's his third. Danville hits another free throw. Now if you're Fredericktown, again, you only have team 16 fouls. You got a good lead, you have momentum going. Do you come out with some pressure? Do you come out, continue to trap? Well, they were trapping previously, forced to turn over when, uh, when they're on defense. And, It'll be interesting to see how aggressive they play. Tegan Rule nice to Carpenter and Carpenter's foul. Rule did a good job of penetrating, drawing the defense and getting uh, Carpenter who was rolling to the basket. We might have a long fourth quarter. We might see a lot of uh, free throw shooting. You have two teams that are playing hard, two teams with tough kids out there. And Carpenter now with 25. He had 24 in their first meeting. And he splits the pair, and the lead is at 15. I'll tell you what, you see the drive inside, and no matter who goes in, they know Carpenter is protecting the rim. Right. Yeah, he's rotating over, and he's going to try to get the block shots. I think you said he has 13 or 14 for the year. He's uh, got a couple more tonight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with a 15-point lead, that's, that's nice. I would still rather see him rotate over and get good position. Um Make it tough for the offensive players. Weckes are now with five. All of those from the strike. Carpenter thought about the three instead with a shot fake and gets a little closer. Boy, Ben Mast, if he had turned around, Ben yeah. Mast would have had it laying right in his hands. Tomorrow or 
when they go over film, uh, yeah, he's going to see that and say, I had a I had a steal right there given to me. I didn't take advantage of it. Now, if you're Danville, you're down 13. Um, you know, in a game like this, 13 is, is a lot of points. But the only way you're going to crawl back is, number one, getting stops at the defensive end. Well, they just did that. And number two, score at the offensive end, especially with the clock stop. In the last couple of possessions, they've drawn fouls, and they get a chance to go to the free throw line and get back in this basketball game. Now, we talk all the time, Brian, about defensively you want to get a kill. Three stops in a row. Teams talk about getting eight of those a game, and they have a chance to win. Well, right now, Danville's got to put together some, some kills. Well, that foul on Fredericktown as they get the ball inside to Lester. You can't give second shots. Nice pass by Bean. Better pass, cross-court skip. Inside to Carpenter. He's going to be fouled. This should be. Actually, I thought that was on the floor. Yeah, but it's, it's fun for the official to say and one. So... <laughs> But if you're Danville, yeah, yeah, you know, I guess there's different ways to attack it. You got the lead down to 11. It didn't look like Fredericktown was going to really hold the ball. They're still going to be aggressive. They're still playing. Uh, Danville just gets out of position a little bit. Fredericktown gets multiple shots up at the basket, and here they get a chance for the three-point play. Carpenter with 27. He'll look for 29 from the line. That possession was very good passing by Fredericktown. As a coach, you like to see good passing. Now with 28, and the lead is back to 14. And Danville needs a basket. Oh, man wide open. Nice look. Nice layup. Now you can just play solid defense. Play solid. You don't need to, you know, be overly aggressive right here. Fredericktown is, is, is still being aggressive with the ball. Here they penetrate. They kick. Bean knocks down a big one from the corner. Well, and that's good that it went in. You see the confidence that this Fredericktown team has. And I guess you kind of walk that fine line. You want to play time and score. Right. But then you have a shooter like that, and he's left open. He was, right. And, again, I, you know, what I was saying is just play good, solid defense. Well, good, solid defense means you don't leave a shooter. I know he hasn't been as hot tonight as I saw him a couple of weeks ago, but you don't leave a shooter wide open. You always talk about hand down, man down. If you don't have a hand in a shooter's face, it's like having a man down at that time. They literally had a man down. Nobody within a few feet of a shooter in the corner, which Bean makes a big one. Offensive rebound up strong and in by Max Payne. And you explained it exactly right. Strong. Big, strong offensive rebound. Goes up against some big dudes. All out of bounds. This and will go to causes Danville. the turnover. Do the Blue Devils have a run in them? 5.29 to go, 61-48 Fredericktown. Carpenter, Rule, and Mast on the bench for Fredericktown in foul trouble. Three in the air. Big rebound by Lester. And up ahead to Thompson, off balance, it drops. That was a nice layup. Max Payne was running right in front of him, and he was able to connect. Ooh. Wekeser took a shot in the face from Bellman, and if that's on Bellman, that's four. That is four for Trevor Bellman. Some finals, Centerberg defeating East Knox 57-32, and Northmore beating Cardington 51-38. So, it looks like that uh, Centerburg will remain in second place. Northmore in third place. 
in KMAC action. Wekeser with eight, all from the strike. He had 26 the first time these two teams played. Boy, that ball is just going everywhere. And Frederick Town turns it over, but Danville can't capitalize. And a timeout taken by the Freddies, 4.45 to go. And Dibbling wants to make sure everybody's calm and on the same page. Exactly. I think exactly right. He didn't like the last couple of possessions. I mean, listen. You want to be aggressive, but you don't want to be overly aggressive. Realize, as you said, time and score. Realize that you have a 14-point lead. Realize that there's 4.45 on the clock. Danville has being, been playing defensively very aggressive, so you don't have to be overly aggressive yourselves. Take advantage of when Danville gets out of position instead of just throwing the ball the length of the court out of bounds. And you can also, at the offensive end, you can slow it down a little bit and be a little bit more patient. Well, you, you can try. I think Danville's being very aggressive, and you, you look for Danville to make a mistake. You look for the defense that's playing overly aggressive to make a mistake and take advantage of it. You don't have to create the, uh, the opening. Let the defense create it. And I tell you, if they have a backdoor play the, in their right. playbook, because they're going to overplay passing lanes. You're, I, you're exactly right. That this would be a time to, to, to use it. Inside the Mullins is and off the Is that a backdoor right there? Here's a backdoor. Kick it out. Get it into Lester, and a nice feed to Thompson, but he can't finish. Up ahead to Beckett. Offensive rebound by Carter, and he's fouled. I'll tell you what, there is no quit in this Danville team. Well, no, you're you're exactly right. Those kids give you everything they have. You're on the road. You're playing the best team in the conference. You're down in the fourth quarter, and they are still going at it. It seems like, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of kids that and a coach that – they don't really look at the score. They're just, we're going to play hard. We're going to play hard all the time. And if we're down 20, up 20, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Second free throw is no good, but an offensive rebound. And there's two more. Max Payne. Again, 11-point deficit, little over four minutes left. Just get a stop. Play regular defense, get a stop. Here's a good look right there. Get a rebound. They're off and running. Three in the air. It's good. Now they got a little mo on their side. Spencer Payne makes and it an eight-point game. Payne again. That boy, I tell you what. He has such a sweet step back shot. Payne now with 21 and don't look now, it's a six point game with 3.45 to go. Well, in the previous timeout, you know Coach Dibbling talked about, listen, we don't need to be in a fast pace, just throw the ball up and run. Let them make the mistake. This last position possession right there, Again, throw the ball, steal, long throw, steal, get the ball inside to uh, Payne again, and, you know, he scores, what, five points in a matter of six, seven, eight seconds, and they do have momentum on their side. And with 3.45 left, I think if you're Danville, I think uh, uh, Coach Lyons is telling them, listen, we don't have to be overly aggressive. Yeah, we don't want him to hold the basketball, but I don't think Fredericktown is going to do that. We just want to play good, solid defense and make sure we limit them to one shot down the court. Your key, one of your keys, you called it, get the game to the fourth quarter. Exactly. And that's what Danville has done. Right. And uh, uh, 
Frederick Towns got a six-point lead, but Danville is in the double bonus. So when you get the ball offensively, Danville, be aggressive. Get to the line. The starters are back on the floor for the Freddies. Big possession right here just to set the tone for the last 340. Carpenter at the top of the key. Good, solid defense on him, just moving his feet. Good, solid defense. Carpenter squares. Nice Nice back door. And a foul, and Lester could not hit the shot, but it'll go to the line. You talked about Fredericktown looking for backdoor. There was a backdoor play right there. Foul on Spencer Payne. That's his second. And Lester to the line. Lester with 12. We mentioned at the beginning of the quarter that we're going to see some free throws this fourth quarter, and it's important for both teams to convert. Well, and as you talked about, Fredericktown, a 56% free throw shooting team on the season. And they've been a lot better than that tonight. And that was the big ones with, with, by Brady Lester. I mean, momentum's going with Danville. and He splits the pair, but steal. he gets the rebound. And he gets fouled. He'll go to the line again. Big possession by Fredericktown. Big possession by Brady Lester. Prior to the timeout, it was Spencer Payne who scored, what, five points in 10 seconds. Now we come down here, and Brady Lester said, listen, I can match that myself. (laughs) He converts on the three-point play. Lester now is 16, and he is heated up here in the second half, and he reaches, and if that's on Lester... That's his first. But more importantly for Danville, now they get a chance to go to the free throw line, shoot two with the clock stopped. Now the deficit's at 10 points. So now what are you going to do defensively down there? I still say just play solid defense. I don't see Frederick Crown trying to hold the basketball. Um, but listen, you can't let backdoor, you can't let offensive rebounds if you're Danville. Payne, a perfect three for three. He looks to go four for four from the stripe. He's got 22. Danville showing a little man-to-man. It looks like full court. You want to be careful screening on the ball now. That's a good opportunity for the defense to trap when you screen on the basketball. Here's a backdoor cut and a nice nice pass. Nice finish by Tegan Rule there. Strong move inside. And an offensive rebound. And again, they continue to pound the offensive glass. Goes out of bounds. And it goes to Fredericktown. Yeah, it wasn't lack of fight, though, by Danville on the offensive boards. It has been a pretty even battle on the glass all night long. Danville with a one-rebound edge, 31-30. Now, if you're Danville, you're going to have to come out and maybe gamble a little bit, go after it. Carpenter for three, and he's fouled after the shot. And I see Coach Diblin kind of staring at him like, uh, We don't need you know, that. No, we, we don't. Not with a 10-point lead. And I, I'm sure you're a good three-point shooter, but uh, uh, again, time and score. But it works out for him. He gets to the line to shoot three. I guess it works out for him if he makes at least two of the three. He's got 28 on the night. And he has been the difference on both ends of the floor. All right, they're saying he's only got two shots, so he must have completed the shot, come down, and then been fouled. Well, that's what I thought. It didn't look like it was in the act of shooting. Well, then next week. Take a look at the shot. 
and he had already landed and then got there bumped. You. That's it. Next week, I'm bringing you a striped shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think they're explaining it over at the scores table. Yeah, I'm sure mom and pop would like to understand too, so. 2-11 to go, and Danville got to within six. And now Fredericktown has pushed the lead back to 10. Fredericktown coaches, I don't think, are happy. Yeah, yeah. They're also freezing their own shooter. I'm not sure it's Fredericktown that's asked for this explanation, but. Yep, he's only getting one more. Missed the first. And he misses the second, and Danville. <laughs> Levi Lyons said, I don't care if you're on my team. I'm grabbing that ball. Skip pass. Lyons for three. But another offensive rebound. It's put back up by Dustin Beckett. Danville within eight. Fredericktown can be a little patient now. Ball batted oh. around. It's on the floor. And let's see who the possession arrow goes to Danville. I thought it was Dan. Well, maybe the quarter break changed it, but it looks like the, they have the arrow going to the Freddies now. Nope. You are correct on that. Timeout is going to be called by Danville with 1.38 to go. An eight-point lead. And this is going to go down to the wire. OH Report will be here tomorrow for girls action as the, what do you call the Lady Blue Devils? The Lady Blue Devils are taking on Fredericktown here on OH Report. At 1 o'clock? Are you just going to spend the night? <laughs> Brian Harder, Greg Collins from Fredericktown. We've got a good one here in the K-Mac as the Freddies looking to remain unbeaten in conference play. And they've got an eight-point lead with 1.38 to go. One timeout left for both teams. I be interesting to see Danville if they're saying, hey, listen, there are a couple of guys we want to foul as soon as they touch the basketball, but they're not going to be able to let Fredericktown hold the ball very long. Carpenter. Trying back to go back door. door, and he forces it. He did. Ball Good on defense. the ground and a foul. I think this is going to be on Lester. Coach Dibbling not real happy with that possession. Number one, the pass. Number two, the foul. And again, you have a, 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 a eight-point lead, a minute 30 left. This game's not over. But you're also, you want to take advantage. You want to take advantage of any close situation because you know there's going to be more of these situations as the season goes on. Payne at the line. He's been a big part of this comeback. He's now got 24. Now is the time if you're Danville, if you have some full court pressure, you might want to show it right here. An offensive rebound. Up for three, it's good! Wackerser with his first field goal of the night. It comes with 122 to go. And it pulls Danville to within four. Big, big possession. Made free throw, missed free throw offensive rebound, kick out to a three. And what better time to shoot a three than after a missed shot when the defense is scrambling and you kick it from inside out and they take advantage of it. Unfortunately, though, they use their last timeout. 
So now maybe you take the team in Fredericktown that is not good historically from the line. Right. And you put them at the line, and you stretch this out, and you make them beat you from the free throw line. Which is exactly what uh, you know we thought Danville would love to be in that situation. Make it a free throw contest at the end. It's still a two-possession game, though. But if you're Danville right now, you're probably talking about a couple of guys that maybe you want to foul as soon as they touch it, or a couple of guys, hey, We'll foul anybody but these guys. You know, these guys are pretty good shooters. Now, Kate Carpenter just missed two his last time at the line. See if they guard the inbounder. Danville with some full court pressure. They come with a trap. Fredericktown breaks it. Another trap. Oh, stay. He said, no, I got yelled at the the last time. (laughs) He takes it to the line. He's going to be fouled, and he'll go to the free throw strike. Cade Carpenter with 30, and he was not going to be denied on that trip to the line. No, he wasn't. He had a one-on-one situation. He used his strength and took it right to the hoop. And that's the fifth foul for Levi Lyons. So he is gone. Big free throws for Cade Carpenter. Still a two possession game. This could get it to three. It does. Danville's got to be quick down the court. Good penetration, good finish. Max Payne with two more. Time now becoming a factor, and they're there going to have go. to foul. Yep. Kate Carpenter, a little slow to get up on the far end of the floor. Now, if you're Danville, you're, you're, you're down five, and, you know, usually I would say down five, 45 seconds left if there's missed free throws here you know, continue to get the ball to the basket. And if he does miss it, that's what you want. But if he hits one of these, you got to remember you're out of timeouts. So you might have to start looking for the long ball here. Ben Mast at the line. His first trip to the strike tonight, he's got two points. Nice, nothing but net. Two possession game still. He can get it to three with this one. This is the big one here. And it's out and no good. Danville with a chance, 41 seconds to go and a foul on Lester from behind. And that's what you don't want. I. Didn't see the contact here. We'll see it right here coming up. Just kind of uh, rides you don't the want, back. Yeah, you don't want the clock to stop. Payne at the line with 24. What a ball game tonight here in Fredericktown. And, you know, there's so many times in this basketball game in the third period when they were down 20 in the fourth period where the Danville kids could have quit. And you made the statement that there's no quit in these guys, and there isn't. They're going to play to the very end. Well, and they've given themselves a chance. With 40 seconds to go, a lot can happen. We saw four points scored in about five seconds. Exactly. Exactly. And, again, tonight Fredericktown is shooting the the, the free throws very well, but – you know, it, it certainly gets tougher and tougher as the game goes on in a close basketball game to knock down free throws. And that's a big miss. His first miss tonight from the line, he was five for five before that trip.
Now they're going to have to get good pressure, maybe look for one steal, but then they're going to have to go for a foul here. And a foul is going to be called. And I think this is going to send Carpenter to the line. When Danville fouls you, it's not a slap on the hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're going to get their money's worth. They are. They are. Carpenter has missed two of his last three from the line. He has too good a form to not be an exceptional free throw shooter. And we're back to a three possession game. Now if you're Danville, you really gotta look for the three. And you cannot turn the ball over. Freddie's up seven. Cade once fouled. They break it, they got the numbers. Good choice. Inside nice to Carpenter. Cut. He's got 35. And an offensive putback. It's gonna to be too little too late. Well, Danville made it interesting. Well, they did. It's a much higher score than uh, than I thought the game would be and much higher scoring than these two teams' uh, average. Probably both teams are good 15 points over their average. But we, they put on a little offensive show for us tonight. It's good to see a game in the, in the 70s and not the 40s. Well, I'll tell you what, Danville might be 6-10. But that record is a little bit deceiving. That'll do it. Frederick Tau with a 79 to 70 win over Danville. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. You've been watching boys high school basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Playoff time, baby. Games, snacks, drinks. I mean, what else can you ask for, bro? Really? Hey, pass me a Pepsi. I mean, can you drink any louder? That's how I drink. Loud like that? I drink loud. I like to enjoy it. Toss me some ways. Did you eat any louder? It's normal to eat loud. Drinking loud makes no sense. Peyton, Eli, road trip to the Super Bowl. Hard pass, playoffs are on. You're paying for that door, by the way. I got a bus, the bus has got a bus, let's go. Can we go see the bus? What up, Eli? It's your cruise. I miss you, buddy. I miss you too, man. Super Bowl, baby, let's go. We're not going. I'm going to get more chips and drinks. Do not leave this room. I got you, I got you. 
Whoa! Whoa. Super Bowl, here we go! Are you kidding me? Technically, I didn't leave the room. I'm calling mom. After I finish these chips. How much longer? You drive weird. Plus, are we there yet? No! Hey, bus, we gotta pull over for some more chips and drinks. Oh, you got it. Hey, guys, look who I found. Bradshaw? <laughs> hey, guys, got room for one more? Got Doritos? Got Mountain Dew. What, do we really want to bring him? It might start to feel crowded. I mean, maybe if we had a little... Oh, please don't. You know, you don't say it. Salsa. Ooh. I love me some salsa. All right, I got an idea. We got one seat left, and it's special just for you. Let's do it. Ah! This is like a convertible. It's up a whole lot better. Good for you, you're happy and healthy, not me. If you ever care to ask, good for you, you do it here and there without me. That's kind of open things up a little bit. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. But enough about me, let's start the show, starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told them all that I was soon, soon. No as a child, back in the womb, yeah. oh. Told us to back, I need my broom, broom. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom. I'm in a whip, so I gotta zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way. They Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. And don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision, they looking so blind. I hit my lawyer, I don't got a time. Cross on my teeth and he died. Time now for our Mike's Frederick Town Marathon Towing and Repair Player of the Game. It's Cade Carpenter. We will send it down courtside with Coach Collins. Coach? OH Report MVP, we have Cowboy Cade Carpenter here tonight. And Cade scores 35 points. Cade, that's your career high? Yes, sir. Any, any time you've ever been close to that? Uh, back in middle school, way back when. Well, it looked like tonight you guys are going to run away with the game in the third quarter, but as it looks, you needed all 35 points. Yeah, I mean, we uh, figured we had a good lead going into half. I mean, not the best. We let them stick around. We knew they weren't the top dogs in the league, and we should have came out more ready to go. We didn't come out as hot as we did against, like, Sanderberg or Northmore. But, uh, yeah, we, we just should have came out hotter and played harder the whole time through. We kind of gave it a break in the third quarter. Now, in the fourth quarter, Danville got a little run at you. Coach called a couple of timeouts. What did he relay to you guys during the timeouts? He was just saying that we know that uh, we're, we're going to win this game. We all knew we were going to win it. We just had to play like it and get more confidence in us and the team. And we knew we knew if we were shooting, we were gonna, they were eventually going to go in. So, 
Well, I got to say, before we let him go, we got to talk a little bit about his baseball. He's going to go to college and play baseball. What is your plans next year? I'm going to go commit to the Mount Vernon Nazarene University and be a pitcher. Well, I know Naz has a great baseball program. I'm sure you're looking forward to your senior year of playing baseball. But before that, you still have a regular season, try to win a conference championship, also a tournament run ahead of you. Now you got three conference games to go. Anyone that you're really a little apprehensive about playing? Uh, not really. I mean, we're all ready, and we are looking forward to Northmore and Centerburg. That's, that's our rivals, and we're ready to go against them. Well, Fredericktown comes out with a big win tonight because the Cade Carpenter has a great night. Right now, I want to take it to break, and then we'll head back up to Brian Harder. Thanks, Cade. Enough about me. Let's start the show. Starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go wrong. Wrong. I told them all that I was soon. Soon. No, it's a child back in the womb. Yeah. Oh. Told us to back. I need my room. Room. Hop in the car, watch it go wrong. I'm in a whip, so I got a zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tune. They in the way. I'll be light on the soy milk and gently stirred. Don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision, they look so blind. I hit my lawyer, don't got a time. Cross on my teeth and he died. Time now for our post-game show. Frederick Town with a big win, 79-70 to over Danville. And outside of a couple stretches there in the third quarter, Danville really played well with Frederick Town. Well, they, they certainly played hard the entire basketball game, and it looked like Frederick Town was going to run away with it. But uh, Danville, because of their fight and making some plays, they, uh, they stay in the basketball game. And, you know, we said at the beginning of the game, if they can get to the fourth quarter, if they can make it close, make it a free throw shooting contest, they would have the advantage. But as you look, Fredericktown really did a great job at the free throw line. I'm sure that's something that a positive that Coach Dibling's going to look at. Well, Dibling had to be very nervous there in the second half when he saw his starters falling to foul trouble. And there right. was a stretch there where he had three of them sitting on the bench beside him, and that lead was starting to shrink. And you've been there. You got right. to, you really decide. Right. Okay, when do I put my starters back in the game? Yeah, well, exactly right. You know, as the momentum is starting to turn, you know, how do you play it? Now, it all depends on how your bench is. And he's got the luxury of a of a pretty good bench. And he had the luxury of a of a lead, but you know, they they got a little too out of control at times, and Danville took advantage and got back into it. If if they would have lost this game. They would have yeah. looked at that turnover. Right. Kate Carpenter at the free throw line trying to force a backdoor pass. Right. That was something they didn't need. But other than that, Cowboy Cade came to play. Well, you know, you know as well as I do, Brian, that it's, you know, as a coach, you'd rather a team be overly aggressive and you're trying to put reins on them and bring them back instead of trying to get a team to fight. And both coaches have teams that go out and battle. And it's great. They can go in tomorrow and just say, hey, listen, we love your battle, but here are times we need you to rein it in a little bit and just be fundamentally sound. I'll tell you what, they were. he was talking about Northmore and Centerburg. Yeah. Notice he did not mention Mount Gilead. And that's your hometown. He yeah, you no respect for Brian Harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, 
Kate also mentioned that uh, uh, when they timeouts uh, during the second half, that uh, coach said, hey, well, I know we're going to win, but, uh, well, I'm not sure. Coach might have said that, trying to be positive. But I'm not sure deep in his heart he really felt like this was an automatic W at any time until the buzzer sounded. Now, obviously, these stats are unofficial, but the rebounding edge goes to Danville. 21 turnovers. They had they had some uh, situations and some possessions where they gave it away, but they continued to fight, especially in the offensive glass. Well, and, and they do. They, they, they battle in the offensive boards. But you're right. Uh, you know, they, they – they have guys that play hard. I, I don't know if they have a skilled, I mean, a, ba- a real basketball skilled ball handler that can, you know, handle pressure and handle the tempo. Um, I mean, they, they battle out there, but, you know, 21 turnovers, and it might even be a few more than that. Uh, that that's a lot of turnovers to overcome. Well, with the win, Fredericktown is now 10 and six overall. They're nine and zero oh in the KMAC. Danville drops to six and ten. They are two and seven in conference play. The final score: Fredericktown 79 and Danville 70. Our thanks to tonight's broadcast team. Our producer was Adam Thompson, and the fine camera work courtesy of Justin Wilson. Most of all, though, our thanks to you for joining us once again. The final score from Fredericktown: the Freddies 79 and Danville 70. For Greg Collins, I'm Brian Harder. So long from Fredericktown.